Kentucky Ride Transportation, Network Covered Driver, to Full Service Shopper, to CDL Delivery, Episode 22, Studying CDL Pre-Trip Guide. We begin with the front of the vehicle. I will check my clearance and marker lights to make sure they are clean and functional, also amber in color. The headlights are clean and working, both the high and low beams. My left and right amber turn signals are clean and functioning. I will separately check the four-way flashes that are operating properly in amber. My amber reflectors are clean and not damaged. I see no poles on the ground. Engine compartment. Open the hood. Start on the passenger side. The alternator is belt driven and mounted securely. It is not damaged. Walk around to the other side. The water pump is belt driven, mounted securely. It is not damaged or leaking. The air compressor is gear driven, mounted securely. It is not damaged or leaking air. Power steering pump is gear driven, mounted securely. It is not damaged or leaking. I'm looking for leaks on the side and bottom of the engine and transmission. There are no puddles on the ground. All the hoses are in good condition, not leaking, with no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. The belts have no more than three quarter inch play. They are not cracked or frayed. This is the oil dipstick. I will check the oil level is above the refill mark. The coolant is at the proper level and is full and there are no leaks. This is the power steering fluid. It is above the refill mark and there are no leaks. Steering. The steering box is securely mounted and not leaking. If you're looking for any missing nuts or bolts. The power steering hoses are not leaking, have no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. On the steering linkage, all the connecting links, arms, and rods from the steering box to the wheel are not worn or cracked. I'm checking that all joints and sockets are not worn or loose, and there are no missing castlenets, bolts, or cotter keys. Suspension steer axle. There are no missing, shifted, cracked, or broken leaf springs. Both my front and back leaf spring mounts are not bent, broken, or cracked. There are no missing or damaged bushings. The U-bolts are not broken or loose and are not missing any nuts. The shock absorber is secure and there are no leaks. Brakes, steer axle. The brake hose has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. The hose and couplings are not leaking air. The brake chamber is not cracked, dented, or leaking air and is mounted securely. There are no loose or missing clamps. The slack adjuster and push rod is not bent, broken, or cracked. There are no loose or missing parts. Push rod should not move more than one inch or pulled by hand with brakes released. In the brake drum, there are no cracks, dents, or holes. There are no loose or missing bolts. I am checking for any oil or grease. The brake lining should not be worn dangerously thin. Wheels, steer axle. Inside and outside of the rim is not damaged or bent. There are no welding repairs, and all bolt holes are not cracked or distorted. The tread and both side walls of the tire have no cuts, bulges, or abrasions. The tread is worn evenly and has a minimum depth of 4 seconds of an inch. I would use a tire gauge to check for proper inflation of 100 PSI or manufacturer specs. The valve stand is not broken or damaged and has a cap. All of the lug nuts are present, free of cracks and distortions, show no signs of looseness, such as rust trails or shiny threads. The hub oil seal is not leaking, the oil level is adequate. Side of vehicle. I will check that the mirrors and brackets are not damaged and are mounted securely with no loose fittings. I will check that the door is not damaged that it opens and closes properly from the outside. The hinges should be secure with seals intact. The marker light, left turn signal, and four-way flashers are clean, functional, and amber. I will also check the right turn signal. 
A DEF tank is secured. Cap is tight, and there are no leaks from tank or lines. Also, the level is adequate, at least an eighth of a tank. Fuel tank is secure. Cap is tight, and there are no leaks from the tanks or lines. Drive shaft is not bent, broken, or cracked. Couplings should be secure and free of foreign objects. The exhaust system has no cracks, holes, dents, or signs of leaks, such as rust or carbon soot. The system should be connected tightly and mounted securely. Frame and cross members have no cracks, illegal welds, holes, or other damage. Suspension drive axle. The torque arm is not damaged and mounted securely. The spring mount is not bent, broken, or cracked. There are no damaged bushings or missing bolts and is mounted securely. The leaf spring is not bent, broken, or cracked. It is not shifted. The U-bolts are not broken or loose and are not missing any nuts. The airbag has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. There are no air leaks and is securely mounted to the frame and axle. Shock absorber is secure and there are no leaks. Brakes Drive Axle The brake hose has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. The hose and couplings are not leaking air. The brake chamber is not cracked, dented, or leaking air and is mounted securely. There are no loose or missing clamps. Slack adjuster and push rod is not bent broken or cracked. There are no loose or missing parts. Push rod should not move more than one inch when pulled by hand with the brakes released. On the brake drum, there are no cracks, dents, or holes. There are no loose or missing bolts. I'm checking for any oil or grease. Brake linings should not be worn dangerously thin. Wheels drive axle. The inside and outside of both rims are not damaged or bent. There are no welding repairs, and all bolt holes are not cracked or distorted. Tread the sidewalls, both tires have no cuts, bulges, or abrasions. Both treads are worn evenly and have a minimum depth of 2 30 seconds of an inch. I should use a tire gauge to check for proper inflation, or PSI, and manufacturer specs on both tires. Both valve stems are not broken or damaged and have a cap. I will check the spacing between the tires for objects when the tires are not touching. All the lug nuts are present, free of cracks and distortions, show no signs of looseness such as rust trails or shiny threads. I am checking that the axle seals are not leaking. Rear of vehicle. Splash guards, mud flaps are not damaged and mounted securely. My tail lights and reflectors are clean, functional, red in color. The left and right turn signals are red, clean, and functional. Four-way flashers and brake lights are red and functional. The backing light is clean and functional. Coupling area. Airlines have no cuts, bulges, or abrasions. The lines and couplings are not leaking air and are secure at both ends. The electrical lines are not cut or spliced. All the lines are not tangled, pinched, or dragging against tractor parts. The air and electrical connections are sealed and in good condition. Glad hands are marked in place, free of damage and leaks. The electrical plug is firmly seated, locked in place on both ends. The catwalk is solid, clear of objects, securely bolted to the tractor frame. The steps leading to the cab entry and catwalk are solid, clear of objects, Securely bolted to the tractor frame. Apron is not bent, broken, or cracked. Trailer is lying flat on a stiff plate with no visible gap. I am checking for proper lubrication of the skid plate and then it is securely mounted to the platform with all bolts and pins secure and not missing. I'm making sure the release arm is in the engaged position. I'm checking that the platform and slide from bricks and cracks are securely mounted. I'm looking for loose or missing mounting bolts, brackets, clamps, or nuts. I would look for loose or missing locking pins in the slide. They are fully engaged. Air hose has no cuts, bulges, or abrasions. There are no leaks. Fifth wheel is positioned properly 
so that the tractor frame will clear the landing gear during turns. When looking to the throat of the fifth wheel, check that the locking jaw will fully close around the kingpin and holding it in place. The kingpin is not bent or damaged. Trailer, front of trailer. I will check the header board for cracks, bulges, or holes. The clearance lights are clean, functional, and amber. Side of trailer. All the marker lights on the side are clean, functional, and amber. All the reflective tape is in good condition. Amber reflectors are clean, not cracked. I will check that the landing gear is fully raised with no missing parts. The support frame and pads are not damaged. Crank handle is secure. Frame, cross members, the floor have no cracks, broken welds, holes, or other damage. Marker light, left turn signal, and four-way flashes are clean, functional, and amber. I will also check the right turn signal, uh, making sure the locking pins are locked in place and the release arm is secure. Suspension, trailer axle. The torque rod is not bent, broken, or cracked, and securely mounted. There are no missing, shifted, cracked, or broken leaf springs. The front and back spring mounts are not cracked or broken. The U-bolts are not broken or loose, they are not missing any nuts. Brakes trailer axle. The brake hose has no abrasions, bumps, or cuts. The hose and couplings are not leaking here. The brake chamber is not leaking, cracked, or dented, and is mounted securely. There are no loose or missing clamps. Slack adjuster and push rod is not bent, broken, or cracked. There are no loose or missing parts. The push rod should not move more than one inch and pull by hand with the brakes loosed. Brake drum, there are no cracks, dents, or holes. There are no loose or missing bolts. And I'm checking for any oil or grease. The brake linings should not be worn dangerously thin. Wheels, trailer axle. Inside and outside, both rims are not damaged or bent. There are no welding repairs and all bolt holes are not cracked or distorted. Tread and sidewalls and bolt tires have no cuts, bulges, or abrasions. Both treads are worn evenly and have a minimum depth of 2 30 seconds of an inch. I would use the tire gauge to check for proper inflation, 100 psi, or manufacturer specs on both tires. Both valve stems are not broken or damaged and have a cap. I would check the spacing between the tires for objects and the tires are not touching. All the lug nuts are present, free of cracks and distortions, show no signs of looseness such as rust trails or shiny threads. The hub oil seal is not leaking. Oil level is adequate. The mud flap is not damaged, not as securely. Rear of trailer. Our tail lights, identification lights, all marker lights, including the one on the side rear, are clean, functional, and red in color. The left and right red turn signals are clean and functional. The four-way flashes and brake lights are functioning. The reflective tape the red reflectors are in good condition. The door is not damaged. I'm checking that the door opens, closes, and latches properly. First, a mounted fire extinguisher. I have three red reflective triangles and spare electrical fuses. Before I begin my in-cab inspection, will you assist me with an external light check? Close and latch the hood. Place the wheel chocks around the steer tire. Enter with three points of contact. Turn the key on and the lights on. Check all the left and right signals, four-way flashers, the low and high beams, and brake lights. Turn off the key and the lights. The safety belt is securely mounted, adjusts, matches properly, and is not ripped or frayed. I will now perform a safe start. I will make sure the truck is in neutral and the parking brakes are set. Start the truck. I see the ABS and DEF indicator came on and went off to tell me that the systems are functioning properly. I will now check the rest of my dash indicators. My left turn indicator, right turn indicator, and four-way flasher indicator are working properly. Turn on the lights. The high beam indicator is working properly. Turn the lights off. I'm making sure oil pressure gauge is working. 
the gauge shows increasing or normal oil pressure or that the warning light goes off. And making sure the temperature gauge is working. Temperature should be in decline to the normal operating range. The temperature light should be off. Voltmeter gauge shows 12 to 14 volts. So an alternator is charging and the warning light is off. And make sure both the primary and secondary air gauges are working properly. They should build air pressure to govern their cutout roughly 120 to 140 psi. I will check that the air horn and electrical horn work use them. The mirror should be cleaned and adjusted properly from the inside. Windshield should be cleaned with no illegal stickers, no obstructions, or damage to the glass. I will check the wiper arms. The blades are secure, not damaged. Operate smoothly. Use them. Windshield washers must operate correctly. Use them. I will test the heater and defroster work. Use them. Air brake check. I will now perform my brake test. Setup. My air pressure is at the proper level of 120 to 140 PSI. Chop the wheels. I'll make sure the truck is in neutral and turn it off. Turn the key back on. Now I'll we'll make sure to release and push in the truck and trailer brakes and wait for the air pressure to stabilize by listening and watching my gauges. Once it's stabilized, I will begin my brake test. I will fully apply my service brake and hold it for one minute. You should not lose more than 4 PSI in that minute. Will you time me? Hold down the service brake now. I did not lose more than 4 PSI in that minute. I will now test my low air pressure warning devices. I will pump my service brake until the air pressure reaches approximately 60 PSI at which time a light and or buzzer should go off. Pump the brake. Warning devices have gone off at approximately 60 PSI. I will now test my truck and trailer emergency brakes by pumping my service brake until the air pressure falls between 45 and 20 PSI. Within that range, both valves should pop out. Pump the brake. Watch the valves. Both valves have popped out within 45 to 20 PSI and my brakes are now set. I will now perform a safe start to build my air pressure back to the governed cutoff range of 100 to 140 PSI. Start the truck now and remove the wheel charts. I will assist this by revving the motor to 1000 RPMs to shorten the time. I will now test the parking brake. The truck is in gear. I will leave the parking brake out, push the trailer brake, and gently pull forward. The truck should not move. Now, I will put the truck in neutral, pull out the trailer brake. Now, to test the trailer brake, the truck in gear, I will leave the trailer brake out, push in the truck brake. I will gently pull forward, the truck should not move. To check the service brake, release the brakes. I will pull forward at no more than 5 miles per hour and apply the brakes. The truck should not stop, but then when it stops, it shouldn't pull left to right. Hold the steering wheel lightly as you do this. Put the truck in neutral, set the brakes. I'm now done with my pre trip. As a side note, at any time if you remember something you forgot to inspect, tell your examiner about it and inspect it. You must point to or touch everything. You are not required to get under the vehicle. Roadside start and stop. When you're driving, when you approach, Number one, traffic check. Number two, right signal on. Number three, correct lane. Number four, slow down. Number five, no coasting. Stop. Number one, parallel with the curb. Number two, right signal off, four ways on. Number three, set parking brakes. Number four, not rolling. Number five, not blocking traffic or hydrants. Resume. Four ways off. Left signal on. Check traffic. Release parking brakes. No stalling or rolling back. Accelerate. Traffic check. Railroad crossing. On approach. Windows down for the train. Traffic check. 
Slow down if necessary. No coasting. Stay in the right lane. Crossing. Traffic and train check. Looking for stoppages and outages. Completion. Traffic check. Correct lane. Accelerate. Do not shift until the trailer clears the tracks. That was the pre-trip guide, Stevens Transport.